Blessed Monday morning, my friends, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm grateful, thankful to God to come together with you again for a brief devotional. Hope to be a little source of encouragement, maybe conviction, blessing to you all. And the thought for today now goes through the book of Daniel. We just finished Ezekiel, Daniel chapter 1. And as I was starting this uh, chapter of Daniel, it's been referred to Daniel that he was a man of impeccable character, that nothing is said about him sinfully. Uh, there is a little argument by some theologians that in Daniel chapter 6, verse 10, where when he prayed, he opened up his window for everybody to see he was praying. And our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 and 6, when you pray, uh, go into a closet. Don't be like the Pharisees who like to be seen when they pray. I, I've heard that argument, but ultimately we know as Romans chapter 3 verse 23 says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God including Daniel the only one without sin is Christ but as we begin this book of Daniel Daniel chapter 1 verse 8 I was looking at verse 8 it speaks about how Daniel would not defile himself and eat and drink of what was sacrificed to idols in the Babylonian culture at that time foods and drinks before it was partaken of were given to idols and Daniel would not defile himself and I was thinking of self-control how important it is as Christians that we have the fruit of the Spirit Galatians 5 22 to 23 uh, refers to nine fruits or evidences of the Holy Spirit in our lives if we're truly indwelt with the Holy Spirit and the last fruit is temperance or some translations say self-control Proverbs chapter 25 verse 28 says that a person without self-control is like a city without walls, a broken down city, ruined. Uh, we are told in Titus chapter 1 verse 8, as Christian virtues are explained there, one of them is self-control along with purity, holiness, and discipline. We as Christians should be living self-controlled lives in a very uncontrollable life I remember as a young man growing up I used to love the sport of boxing and I did some boxing and some karate and you get into the ring with somebody I always admired fighters who could go into the ring and despite all the punches or the kicks that were coming towards them they didn't get rattled they stayed controlled they had that self-control about them that they didn't get upset or nervous that the punches were coming at them but they were disciplined they were focused as to what they had to do that is how we are to be we are to be sober-minded focused first peter chapter 5 verse 8 reminds us of this that we are to be sober-minded because satan the devil roars around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour we live in a culture today where there is a real lack of self-control I'm asking God to help me in this area of self-control. Um, my oldest daughter, you know, she's not feeling well. She went to a party yesterday, probably ate things she shouldn't have ate. And it upset her stomach yesterday at church. We had a, um, a baby shower for a lady in our church who's going to have a baby. And there was a lot of food. And a lot of the food that was there is not really the most healthiest of foods. And... This is what I'm saying about Daniel. He learned the self-control, his appetite. And sometimes in life, we need to learn self-control with our appetites, whether it's food, whether it's uh, the iPhone. I heard a Christian pastor the other day on the internet speak about how the average hour uh, duration of how much people look at their phones or social media, six to eight hours a day. There's a pandemic, so to speak, of backache, neck ache, dry eyes that are, you know, that are symptoms of too much iPhone time, lack of self-control in the iPhone, lack of self-control with what we eat, as I said before, and obesity. I heard that 33% of Americans are either overweight or obese. Many people are what we would call emotional eaters. Alcohol. A lot of times I see, even in my own neighborhood, about a quarter of a mile from where I live, there is a uh, stationery store, gasoline store, you know, where they sell gasoline, but it's also a little stationery store in there. 
and they sell what's called tall boys, these big cans of beer, and they go off the shelf quickly. Many people are drinking. They're trying to numb the pain in their life. Lack of self-control. What about our eyes, what we look at? Are we, do we have self-control over what we see? You know, Christ told us that in Matthew chapter 5, verses 27 and 28, if we look at a woman or a man lustfully, we committed adultery. What about our hearts? Are we self-controlled with what we think? You know, Christ again in Matthew chapter 5, verses 21 to 26, said that murder is not so much taking a gun and shooting someone, but what resides in your heart? Are we self-controlled over what's in our hearts? This is why we're told in the scriptures, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 31, that we have to die to self. We're to put the self, mortify the flesh, crucify the flesh, put the death sin more and more in our lives, denying ourselves. That's what Christ reminds us of in Mark chapter 8, verse 34, verse 35, where Christ told us, if anyone would come after him, they must deny themselves, pick up their cross and follow him. For whoever will save his life here on earth or live for the things of this earth and the appetites of their hearts and flesh will lose their life. But those who die to this world, those who die to, them, to themselves and what they want to think and do and say will gain life. We need to have self-control over our lips, our tongues, what we say. My friends, I hope today's devotional video will help us to get into the Word of God, truly submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ in this area of self-control. Learning from the example of Daniel, Daniel was a very godly man. He was a holy person. That's what it means to be holy, set apart, disciplining his body. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 to 27 speaks of how a runner, or during that time when Paul spoke, the Greco-Roman Olympics and how so, um, athletes discipline themselves to get into a competition. We are to discipline ourselves, spiritually speaking. Well, what, what comes into our hearts, what comes into our minds, what we look at with our eyes, what we listen to, self-control over our ears. Are we listening to gossip? The temptation is every time you hear a juicy story, ooh, ooh, ooh. no. Learn self-control, brothers and sisters following the example of the perfect one who had self-control, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for my brothers and sisters in Christ who will see this devotional video today. May you fill me, us, with your Holy Spirit so we will learn to be self-controlled and disciplined in a very undisciplined, lack of self-controlled self world. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you all, my friends.